Hi, George here again. And what we're going to look at in this video is a liquid oxygen system. The parts of the reservoir, or the stationary unit, as well as the parts of the portable one as well. So let's take a look at them. Now this is called the liquid oxygen reservoir or stationary unit. It contains oxygen inside of it in a liquid state. So this is one great big vacuum container or like a, uh, an insulated thermos bottle or something like that. It stores the oxygen inside here in liquid form at a really, really cold temperature. So you can kind of think if it's at a really, really cold temperature then there might be some issues with uh, protection. And that essentially means you have to be aware of frostbite. So if you ever see anything frosted over on either the stationary unit here or this portable when it's filled or being filled, don't touch them especially if you don't have gloves on because you could have uh, or could cause frostbite on your fingers or your finger really could stick to that device while it's exposed to that cold temperature. <clears throat> so really be aware of frostbite because you don't want that on your fingers or on your hand or anything else to touch that. So be aware of, of frostbite issues. So what I want to do is I want to bring the camera in a bit closer so you have a chance to see the different parts on the two different systems. So here we're going mobile. All right, whoops, excuse my fingers. So let's look at the canister from the top here. And we'll identify some of the features. Now if we go right to the top, you notice there's this ring right here that I'm pointing to. And this adapter, this is the fill adapter. This is where the gas comes out of the liquid oxygen system. Again, if this was frosted or wet, I wouldn't want to touch that because it could, could, could freeze my finger to here. So always make sure you've got the proper PPE on. So fill adapter, releasing ring. This releasing ring is hooked up to this button here. So once the reservoir, is, the portable is attached, if you need to detach the portable, once the portable is full, simply press this lever here. That pushes that ring upwards. That'll detach the portable from the reservoir. Make sure you're holding onto the portable with one hand and using your other hand to release it so it doesn't fly anywhere. Now you'll also notice that there's a certain configuration here or a certain shape. This shape is the same shape as the portable. So the portable will only fit on here in one way and have it work properly. And you can only get it to seat in there one way. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. One way or it doesn't fit. Now this right over here is the contents gauge. So it tells you by pressure how full the device is. Now our reservoir, this one here, is in fact full because I just lifted it up and it's very, very heavy to move. So there is liquid in it, but for some reason the pressure gauge isn't working. And it says zero. And how I can tell it's zero? There's that little yellow line there at the zero, means it's empty. Now if it was working properly and it was full, that yellow indicator would be all the way up to the top where it says one over one. And that's its way of saying that it's full. So three quarters, half, quarter, and empty. And whether you use this liquid oxygen inside here or not, it eventually will leak out on you because the thermos bottle, is as, as efficient as it is, it'll still allow some gas, some of the liquid oxygen to convert to a gas and eventually it'll all escape even if it's used or not. <clears throat> now we also have here a non-smoking sign. So that's just a reminder that nobody should be smoking near this equipment or lighting a match or anything like that. And it's safe to use or it's safe to keep this at least three to five meters away from an ignition source or from somebody smoking, etc. Now another part is the flow meter. So I'm going to go like this, give you a chance to look at the flow meter. There's the flow meter. It's a flow restrictor style flow meter. So to get the gas to come out of the device and go to the patient, you have to grab the flow meter knob here and just turn it to whatever flow you want. Now this one, for example, goes as high as six liters a minute and it doesn't go any higher. But you can get flow meters placed on these containers that can go up to 15 liters a minute. Maybe even some can go even higher. So when you're not using it, shut the flow off. Make sure it's set to zero. So when you use the flow meter, where does the gas come out of the device? Well, the gas leaves the system right over here. That's your uh, stem and wing nut, your reducing connector. You would simply put a nasal cannula or oxygen tubing at the end here. And then when you turn the flow meter on, gas comes out of here and goes to the patient. All right Now, if you wanted to use a humidifying bottle, let's say, for example, you're using six liters a minute and you wanted to use a humidifying bottle 
you could put a bottle like that where this reducing connector goes and then hook up your oxygen tube and your nasal cannula, etc., to the adapter on the humidifying bottle. That's if you want to incorporate humidity into the system so the humidity goes to your patient. Now, the last couple of things we have here on this container, on this reservoir, we have a metal valve or stem that sticks out from the container right here. This is a condensation collecting tube. And what that means is whenever the liquid comes out of the, out of the tank here and converts to a gas, there's coils in here where that, that conversion takes place, and those coils get really, really cold. So cold, in fact, that frost will develop. Well, as that frost starts to warm up, what ends up happening is it starts to condensate. So all that condensation, that liquid, ends up running down to the bottom here and comes out through this tube into the collection bottle, which is why you need that collection bottle. If you didn't have that collection bottle, the water is just going to simply accumulate on the floor, and then you're going to have a, a slipping hazard because of the water there. A couple other things that you'll see on these tanks. You'll notice on both sides, there's a set of handles. One there, one there. That's for lifting the unit, but don't try to lift it when it's full because it's going to be very, very heavy. And then also happens to have some, like a dolly or a transport mechanism. So some casters on that mechanism so that you can transport the stationary unit and locate it in a safe place wherever you want it for your patient. Okay? So that is the stationary or portable, sorry, stationary or reservoir of liquid oxygen that you'd be using either for oxygen administration to your patient directly or to fill the portable up from. So let's take a look at the portable. So I'm going to put the camera back in the tripod. There we go. And let's take a look at the portable. So this is the portable right over here. It's a mini version of what the reservoir is. If we look at some of the features of the portable, here's your carrying strap. So the patient can put it to the side of their body if they want to be ambulatory with it and carry it. This can also fit into uh, the approved safety holder for rolling it like a trolley on the, on the uh, street. So the patient can be ambulatory. Now, it's really important to always keep these things upright when they've got liquid oxygen inside of them. If they're completely empty, then you can lay them on their sides, but it's still recommended to keep them upright. And that's for safety. Just like you don't want the cup to uh, runneth over, you don't want the liquid oxygen to start coming out of the device unintentionally. So if we look at the top here, you see the contents gauge? So the needle indicates how full it is. This one's pointing to the red, so it's obviously completely empty. If it was all the way over here to the maximum amount of green, it is completely full. This is the adapter where the oxygen comes out of the portable from. Now since we have it in this position, I want to show you how to tell how full it is because it doesn't have a contents gauge like the stationary one does, or the reservoir has. With this one, it tells you the contents by weight. So what you need to do is grab this strap that's closest to the scale and then let the portable hang freely. And what you need to do is look at the gauge. So when I've got this weight on the container here and I see that gauge is in the red, it means it's empty. Now if I did have weight or liquid inside this container, what would end up happening, that weight would pull that needle to the appropriate position within the green to indicate how full it was. So if it was all the way here, for example, it's completely full. And as the oxygen is used up, the weight's going to diminish in the container to eventually it's going to be empty. So you have to hold it like this to see how full it is while looking at the full gauge, the uh, contents gauge. Another couple things. There's a flow meter right here on the side. So just like that has a flow meter, this has a flow meter as well, and you can see it's pointed to zero. As you use the flow of oxygen, or you need a flow of oxygen, you just simply adjust this to the appropriate gas flow that you want your patient to get. Now this one only goes to six, I believe, yep, six. But you can get flow meters uh, of this variety uh, in these containers, these portable containers that can go up to 15 liters a minute. So check to see what's available by the manufacturer and get it adjusted if it needs to be adjusted for the patient. So we'll shut that off. On the back side, we have the whoops, the fill valve, that's right over here. So the fill valve lever, I should say, 
to act, actuate filling or to get the container to fill, you simply have to pull this out like so. And then the container is going to uh, start filling from the reservoir, but it has to be attached. Now on the bottom, you see this blue ring? It's a female connector end. And this female connector sits over top of that male adapter that's color coded the exact same color on our reservoir that we fill from. So we have to line this up to the uh, male end of the reservoir. And you can kind of see the shape. Now remember, this shape of this container is meant to fit that pattern that's on the top of the reservoir right over here so that it lines up properly so it can be filled properly. Now again, remember, you gotta keep this thing upright when you are, uh, when it's got liquid oxygen inside of it and as a habit, it should be kept upright all the time anyways because there is liquid oxygen inside of here as well. There's a small little vacuum tube or container that keeps it uh, very, very cold. For, uh, for as long as it's inside here. But again, it's only efficient to a point and at some point in time, all the liquid oxygen is going to eventually evaporate out of here, whether it's used or not. So only fill this when it's required for use. Don't fill it and sit, set it down by the container or in a safe spot, because if you don't use it, it's still gonna drain out anyway. So you might as well fill it when it's gonna be used and then the patient or the hospital or healthcare unit can get as much bang for their buck as possible out of it anyways. All right, now again, frostbite hazards. So where can frostbite uh, develop? Well, these metal connections right down here. And this one on the reservoir, well, that's where the, it, the um, metals are exposed to extreme cold temperatures. So you'll see frosting in that area. Don't touch it if it's ever frosted up. As well as if there's any liquid on there, make sure the liquid's wiped before you fill the units up. So to fill them up, there's another video on filling, but I just want to show you how you do it. Simply grab a cloth, clean cloth, make sure you've got the appropriate PPE on, and simply wipe this out so there's no frost and no liquid on there. And you do the exact same thing for safety down here, again, using the exact PPE that you needed, the appropriate PPE. Once that was all wiped off, make sure the fill valve's closed, simply line it up appropriately with the reservoir, attach the two together, and then pull the full lever, the fill lever out, and the unit should start filling for you. So that's essentially how to use a liquid oxygen, or the components, sorry, the components of a liquid oxygen system. I hope you found this informative. Again, liquid oxygen, really great to use. Um, it's a good system, you could say, as long as it's used properly and safely. Frostbite is, of course, a hazard that you encounter and the same hazards that uh, you have with any kind of oxygen system apply as well. So make sure you've got the appropriate PPE when you're handling the equipment, when you're filling up the portables, as well as adhere to your fire risk and your ignition source risk when you have any kind of flames or anything else near any kind of oxygen source. So with that, please watch the video on how to fill it because I do have a video on how to fill the portable from the stationary as well and that'll give you an idea of how to do it properly. So until you see that one, and until next time, this is George out. Have a great day.